welcome them to the house of the Lord today. Would you do that? Amen. Praise the Lord.
morning, what it means in our hearts and our lives today. Father, we just thank you this morning. Oh, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who said, not my will be done, but thine. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for that great plan that sets men and women free, that gives us hope in the midst of a hopeless world. Father, we thank you this morning for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we just worship you this morning. We just give you praise. Oh, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Once again, dear Lord, I'm standing in your
Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us to the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he has made us accepted in the beloved. Chapter 2 and verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Does that sound like a good God? Have you ever heard the expression, well, don't mind that person who needs to heavenly minded to be in the earth the good? You ever heard of that? Well, the title of my sermon this morning is the reverse of that. We can be too earthly minded that we're no heavenly good. But the more heavenly minded we are, the better earthly people we are. Because if you are heavenly minded, you can't be any good for the kingdom of God. Because the more of the heavenly that we have, then the more that we're working on behalf of God in this kingdom that we stand for, in this place that God has called us, that we have to understand that we are not earthly people. We've borne the image of the earthly, 1 Corinthians 15 says. But as we have borne the image of the earthly, we're all born into the world by flesh. But through the second Adam, we read in 1 Corinthians 15 that we also, if we had experience with God and born again by the Spirit, we also have to bear the image of the heavenly. Now we got the bearing the earthly part down pretty good, I think. That comes pretty natural, being human, just living for ourselves. So we bear the image of the earthly, but because we're born again, and in order to be into this kingdom, the first thing we have to realize is that the only way that we can be a part of the heavenly kingdom, part of the church of Jesus Christ, is we got to be born into it. You can't bluff your way in, you can't pay your way in, you can't pray your way in, you can't work your way in. The only way to be ready for heaven and in the heavenly kingdom is to be born into it. That's why Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3 and verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I read a story a while ago of someone that was trying to train a, a monkey to be like a man. And some people, because the evolutionists believe that we came from a monkey, well, if you look yourself in the mirror and figure that makes you feel good, that's okay with me, but I'm, I'm more, get more blessed in order that I'm going to bear the image of God who created me. But they tried to make this monkey like a man, teach him to eat like a man, dress like a man, talk like a man, do all the things, and dress him up with a suit, and make him look like a man. But the thing was, he's still a monkey. That's what some Christians are. They want to dress up like Christians, look like Christians, pay their tithes, and go to church, pay like Christians, sing like Christians, pray like Christians, but they're still monkeys. <laughs> I'm not going to go to dinner today, am I? What I mean is the only way some people think is to go to church or pay a few dollars or the name is on a church book or some minister says a few prayers for them when they die or go, that, you know, they're okay. Everybody, everybody goes there. You know what's that when you go to funerals? Everybody goes there. They live like the devil or whatever. But I want you to know this morning on the authority of God's word that the only way to be part of the kingdom of God and ready for heaven and live eternally is to be born again by the Spirit of God. And that's got to be a, a resurrection. That's got to be a spiritual work. You can't imitate that. You can take a monkey and dress him like a man and let make him look like a man, but he's still a monkey. So friends, the way we look, the way we dress, the way we pay, has got nothing to do with 
live in the family of God. If you have an experience with God, you've been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, the only way you can be into this kingdom is to be born by the power of God. You can bust your way through, but it ain't going to work in the end. That's right. That's right. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 24 says, being born again. Somebody say born again. Boy, oh, I'm glad I'm born again. Hallelujah. We talked about last night, the title of the message last night was, Who is like you? A people saved by the Lord. Well, I'm just picking up the story where I left off last night. That was so good. <laughs> Being born again of the incorruptible seed, the word of the Lord that lives and abides forevermore. Every person in this church this morning who was born again by the Spirit and you had that new birth, good news is the moment you were saved, the moment you were born again, the moment the incorruptible seed of the Word of God was planted in you, you were born again, and at that moment you began to live eternally. When you're born again, you're living forever, and you'll never die. That's good news. That's better than you do. <laughs> Some of you are not so excited you should be yet. <laughs> I would guess that most all of you this morning are born again. Stop and think about what I just said. Every person is born again, you're living for eternity. You ain't going to die. The undertaker can out of your body, but the spiritual man will live forever and ever and ever. And one million years from this morning, we'll still be alive in the presence of God. I don't know how it make you feel, but that's good news. That's so good news if you're here and have born again, you ought to be. Because the only way to get to heaven in the kingdom of God is to be born into the family of God. I'm glad that being heavenly minded is part of this kingdom of new birth that Jesus comes to live in the heart. And I'm glad the incredible will see the living word that lives forever and ever and ever. And because the seed of the word of God that cannot die is in you, you cannot die. Heavenly birth. I read from Ephesians chapter 2. Tells us that we are blessed. Somebody say blessed. Oh, we are blessed with all. That's a nice word too. All. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in Bay Montreal. <laughs> Stop, Mark. By our Lord. Look for the sex. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. I told you the title of the message is to be more heavenly minded so we can be more perfectly good. And the more we're connected to who we are as heavenly people, then the better we're going to represent them right here. And we are blessed with all the spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. That means that we're hearers of God, joint ears with Christ, and every blessing of God that's promised in the book is ours. 22,000 plus promises in the Word of God. That's a good blessing. Some people come to church, they go to the punch the board. Man, we ought to be the happiest people in earth. Blessed with all the spiritual blessings. Blessed with every Blessed with love, blessed with peace, blessed with goodness, blessed with hope, blessed with joy, blessed with the wisdom and the knowledge of God. All the blessings. I said, all of the blessings. Not some of them. Some people got just enough blessing to make them miserable. Little few blessings, and they still want the world. The happiest people on planet Earth are the people who are blessed beyond blessed beyond blessed with all the spiritual blessings of Christ Jesus. And those who know their relationship with Jesus and know their ears of God and joint ears with Christ and all the blessings of God through Jesus Christ because of the cross, because of what he's done for us, we have all the blessings that are ours. So if you ain't living in the blessing. It's not God's fault. We're too stunned and no difference. <laughs> I'm blessed. We sing that little chorus, I am blessed, I am blessed every day that I live. I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, when I lay my head to rest, I am blessed, I am blessed, but I am blessed. God is looking after me. I ain't going to worry about it. 
God is good. We're heavenly people, blessed and spiritual, blessings in Christ Jesus. And you're looking for your blessings to the government. It's not much luck. Because <laughs> it's getting worse and worse, boy. But I'm glad I'm not looking to the liberal government, the PC government, or the United States. Certainly not the Donald Trump. <laughs> for my blessings. I'm looking to the blessing. Hello.
have churches and we're good at it. We need God. We need to walk as people of authority. People will come under the authority. You know you have power with God to pray. You have power in prayer to believe God for your family and for your town. Do you know there's enough power in this church to turn badger upside down? You can have a flood bigger than the badger than the Esplanade River. You can have a flood of God's glory flow through this town and sweep everybody into the presence of God. That's the kind of power and authority we have in Jesus. Now I know the way some of you are looking at me like saying, Pastor, really? Well, you'll never get it. But when you start believing it, that what I'm preaching, ain't I preaching from the book here? I'm preaching the truth. God has placed us in heavenly places in a position of authority. We're not living below our circumstances. We are living above them. We are in heavenly places. We are above everything that's against us. Praise God. You might know your condition. Yes. Most of us know our condition more than we know our position, unfortunately. But when you know your position, then your condition will change. Did you get that? But if you know your condition and forget your position, your condition is going to get worse. That's good preaching, my buddy. But if you know your position, your condition is going to get better. Glory. And I think that every town on the land should know that as a church that's alive and well on planet Earth. I believe there should be miracles and healing and salvations and people filled with the power of God as you deliver. If we're walking the authority of God, we ought to see more miracles and more of the demonstration of the power of God. Because as don't just leave it up for the preacher. If you're saved, you're in a position of authority in God. Because that's the problem I have for Pentecostal churches. I've been more than half. Being nice. Sit around in their pews and pay their tithes as if we're paying the pastor. He got to do all that. He got to pray for his sick. He got to do everything. Friends, God has called you into this family in the place of authority. And if you're saved, then act like you're saved. And if you're saved, act like you're people of authority. Don't act like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Why, 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 why? My condition is so bad. I don't know what I'm going to do. Yes, you know what you're going to do. You're going to stand on the word. You're going to stand on the authority that yes. God's given us in the heavenly position with yes. Christ. Remember this morning, you are in the driver's seat. You're in the position, and you're here with God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. How do you like it? Aren't you glad you came this morning? Yes. It's good preaching. <laughs> i got to move on. <coughs> heavenly birth. Heavenly blessing. Heavenly position. Heavenly calling. They say, <coughs> you got the call of God in his life. You got a call. Well, I got good news for you all. We all kind of call it if you're saved. Old pastor. First John 3 and 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Now, if you don't think that's an important calling, you're in the wrong ship. We are blessed with all the blessings of our Father, and He's called us to be His children. We are the light of the world. We are the soul of the earth. We are ambassadors. We are witnesses. We are His representatives here on earth. We are His children. And Jesus said in 1 John 4 and 70, as He is in the world, so are we. Did you get that? As he was in the world. Do you know how Jesus lived when he was in the world? He said, as I lived in the world, so are you. Ephesians 5 and 1 says, be imitators of God. Yes. As dear children. And if you read all of the chapter, it tells us as an imitator of God, we walk in love, we walk in light, and we walk in wisdom. That's the whole chapter of Ephesians 5. You read it. 
So let us people of God. We have a calling to imitate God. We have a calling to represent Jesus. We have a calling in our life that we're the children of God. That we are to live. That's why I say it. Because if we are so earthly minded, so out of the earthly place, that we're not really representing the heavenly kingdom that we represent. We are in this world, but we're not of the world. We are the children of God. So the more heavenly minded we are and realize who we are, then the more worth we're going to be for Jesus in our earth. But if you don't know who you are, you're going to be worth much. But if you know you're called to be a child of God, and the eternal holy God is your Father, wouldn't that cause you to live a little bit different? That every breath you breathe, every waking moment, and even your sleeping moments, that you call yourself a child of God, then if you do, you have to imitate God. Because He's our Father. That's what the Bible says. Imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love, walk in light, walk in wisdom. Bless with all the spiritual blessings. So you say the next time he looks in the mirror, I'm called into the ministry to be a child of God. And live in love and live in light and live in wisdom. And everything that Jesus was on earth. So he wants that same thing in his children, reflecting him. Now that's a high and a holy calling. And that's how we're going to get people saved in Badger. That's how we're going to get people saved across the beautiful land. It's people realizing who they are and living as imitators of Christ and influence people as well as Christ influenced them because we are the children of God. That's our calling. I don't know how that makes you feel. But it makes me feel wonderful good to wake up in the morning or lie down my rest at night and say, I'm a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lords. Uh, my father is rich in houses and lands. He owns all the wealth of the world in his hand. Well, I care if you come us. But wait for me. But the government of God is a lot bigger than the world of governments. And our source of blessing is from our Heavenly Father, our loving Father who cares us, and we are His children. We are heavenly called. We are heavenly citizens. Philippians 3.20 says, our citizenship is in heaven. From whence we look for the Savior. You are citizens of Canada, but you have dual citizenship. Because if you're born again and born the image of the heavenly, and you're a child of God, then you have your paper stamped by the blood of Jesus Christ. Your name is written down in the book of life, and your citizenship is in heaven. That's why the arrows of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 can say they're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. That's why Moses could say he saw him who was invisible. Because they realized that even while they were in this earth, there were only strangers and pilgrims and sojourners. We're only passing through. This world, this world is not our home, church. I know we have to. We're going to be here forever. Bigger houses and bigger candles and bigger wheels. Bigger, 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 bigger like we're going to be here for in hundred years. Stuff. <laughs> this world is not our home. Do you believe that? Our citizenship is in heaven. That means that when you belong to Jesus, you have the papers of citizenship stamped by the blood of Jesus Christ and in the blood of Christ applied to your soul when you're passing through the pretty gates and your passport is stamped by the blood of Jesus. You'll go sweeping to the pretty gates because our citizenship is has been stamped and paid for by the blood of Jesus, and we are citizens of heaven. We belong to heaven. That's why I said, people say, oh, he's too heavenly minded to be the earthly good. No, 
There's too many, too early minds. We don't have any. You are a citizen of heaven. And if you're here this morning, you haven't picked up your papers. Jesus still stabbing papers. Citizenship is still open. The is still open. Citizenship is still available. All you have to do is come and call upon Jesus and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. I want to be part of that kingdom. I want you to come into my heart. I want to have my citizenship stand and be part of that heavenly throne. Hallelujah! Glory to God. And the only way you're going to make it, I'll do wait. Let the minister pray all the prayers of all the family. Say, why wouldn't you make it? He might have made it. They would have said that to Cornelius. Cornelius was a good man. Prayed, gave. But you read, you read the first, first of Acts chapter 10, verse 6. Cornelius said on prayers and memorial before God and gave to the good man. But halfway through the chapter, God sent Peter, a Pentecostal preacher, over to Cornelius house to show him the way of salvation so he could get saved. Now, if he had died before you're halfway through the book of Acts, he said, Now, if Cornelius never went to heaven, Good people are going to go to hell. Because good people need more to be a good person to go to heaven. Because all you got to do is be a good person to go to heaven. Jesus would have died on the cross. Do you think God would send his son on the cross to die? Such a terrible death that you would be saved. You would find another way. Don't think so. Matter of fact, I know so. The only way to be a citizen of heaven is to be born again yes. and be washed in Jesus' blood and have the joy of the Lord your heart say, I'm here, but I don't belong there. Hallelujah. I'm only here for a little while. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't worry. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. It's okay. <laughs> this world is not my home. Right. That makes me feel so good. Go on and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us unto a lively altar. Somebody say lively for goodness sake. <laughs> Too many dead Pentecostals. Unto a lively old pastor. We had a pretty lively time last night. That's pretty good. We're supposed to be alive in church and alive on Monday and alive in the woods and alive around the kitchen table. Blessed be the God of Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has begotten us into a lively old by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance. That's right. That's in corrupt. That means it's forever. What you have in your heart is forever. The inheritance that you have through Jesus Christ is forever. To an inheritance incorruptible, which means it's forever. Undefiled, which means there's nothing <laughs> sinful, nothing fleshly, nothing unholy. It's a pure inheritance through the blood of Jesus Christ is undefiled. Heaven will not be defiled by sin. No sin will enter heaven. This inheritance we have in Jesus is incorruptible, undefiled, and fades not away. Like your hair. <laughs> like your looks. Like your car, like your skidoo, like your grass, like the trees. Things fade away. That's what we're going to trade in a few years. Don't look the same. But this inheritance fades not away. There's not going to be anybody in heaven one million years from the night. I think we should fix this place up. <laughs> Do you an inheritance?
fades not away. Listen to the next part. You ready? Reserved. Reserved in heaven for you. Listen, it can't get tough enough down there that you would miss your reservations. The place is there for you, and you sign up. You just keep on being faithful, keep trusting Jesus, and your inheritance is good because it's reserved. The reserved reservation. The only way you can make it is if you change your mind and say, I'm not going. They will serve the devil for a while. I want to give up on serving Jesus. What a foolish thing to do. We have an inheritance rich and sweet. We're going to be with Jesus forever. Why would you ever want to give up on the best thing in the whole world that's going to keep you forever and ever? You're going to be crazy, man. Life and death. Blessing and cursing. Yes. Light and darkness. You choose. Well, I'll take darkness. I'll take cursing. I'll take death. You're going to be crazy. I'll take Jesus for mine. I'll take life eternal. My reservations were made a long time ago. About 55 years ago. When I got saved. I remember when I was a boy, you remember the whole time, saying, I've been saved 50 years. I was sitting there 50 years. Man, oh man, that's a long time being saved. And now I can look back and say, I've been saved 55 years. <laughs> That's only like a shadow on the vapor compared to the eternity, the inheritance, the reservations that's made for me. I'm going to live forever in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And I have one more point and I'm done. And you're getting out here. Too bad I have 10 more. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews 9 and 24 says we have a heavenly representative who's gone into heaven itself to appear in the presence of God for us. For us. Anybody know who he is? Who is our heavenly representative at the right hand of God praying for us? Our lawyer, our advocate, our high priest, the one who loves us, the one who's touched with the feelings of our infirmities, the one who's provided salvation for the use of our will, the one who's there when you're weak, when you're sick, when you're tempted. Who is God in the presence of God? Hebrews 9 and 24 says, Jesus Christ, our high priest, who has gone to heaven itself to appear in the presence of God for us. He's there for you. He's there for me. And if you're here this morning without Jesus, I want to tell you that the heavenly representative that died on the cross, the door of grace is open and is forgiven. God don't delight in judgment. God delights in mercy and yes. grace and forgiveness. Yes. God delights in salvation. He's not willing that one should perish. And this morning you're here without Jesus. Hear me this morning. There's an heavenly representative waiting for you to call upon him. And he will save you. He has the credentials. He has the nail prints in his hands and his feet. And he's our heavenly representative. It's a child of God when you fail. When you mess up, Hebrews 4 and 12 says we have a throne of grace yes. where we can find mercy, where we can find help yes. in the time of need. Jesus said, Peter, the devil would love to have you and sit you like wheat. Mm -hmm. Peter, I pray for you. You're going to be okay. Friends, let me tell you something this morning. Jesus is praying for you. You're going to be okay. He's your advocate of the law. He's your defense. He's the best defense now in the whole universe. He stands to our defense because he paid the price. He shed his blood. And when you fail, like we all do, we all mess up, we all come short. But there's a throne of grace and mercy. We have a heavenly representative that represents us when we fail and we mess up. And he's a faithful high priest. Oh, that's good stuff. And I don't know how many is here this morning you don't know Jesus. And I want to tell you in closing this message this morning, there's an heavenly representative of Jesus Christ who died on the cross. He wants to make you a citizen of heaven. 
He wants to make you his child. He wants to take away your sin and give you eternal life. They can live forever with him. And no matter how much you need him, he's always there. He will be a faithful God. As people say, I, I'd like to be saved. I'm not sure if I can keep it. Not it, but he keeps you. Because John 1 and 12 says, as many as received them, to them he gave the power. Somebody say power. Power, power to become the sons of God. Amen. And the same God gives you power to become the son of God, and the same power to keep you as a son of God. Ooh, I like it. I don't know who that goes for me. That's the group that's like the priest out of the and enjoy it that much. Praise the Lord. Worship, thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, church, let me tell you something. I want you to stand up right now and give God glory for the errors and the blessing and the honor of the who you are to Jesus. Just stand up. You don't give us a me, but just be loud as you can. Stand up and give God glory. Hallelujah.
one more song. I just feel like saying this morning that Jesus Christ is our heavenly representative in heavenly places. And if you have a need in your life, you'd like for us to pray for you. Now come to this altar if you have sickness, if you have a special need or burden or whatever, we'd be glad to pray for you before we leave this morning. Because there's an heavenly representative here that can be all your needs. And this morning I give you the invitation. You want to come for us to pray. We'll certainly give that this morning. If you're here without Jesus, friend, Jesus. It's a good deal. Sir Jesus. The thing is, in order to be part of the name of the kingdom and live for Jesus, you got to know him. Sometimes people say, well, I'll wait for this on my deathbed or whatever. We don't know. We don't have time to call upon Jesus. We don't have time of the point of your death coming. We don't know. Some people get a chance, some people don't. So this morning, you've got an opportunity to come. To the heavenly representative who will gladly forgive you if he turns nobody away. Well, the devil might give you all the reasons why you can, but Jesus accepts you as you are. Right now, this morning, just as you are, he'll forgive you and take you. And he was allowed him to be the Lord of your life. And I've been serving the Lord since I've been eight years old. I can tell you this much right now. I was glad when I got saved at eight years old, and the longer I live, the gladder I am now. The less I want the world, the more I see the world, the less I want. And the more I see of Jesus, the more I want him. I say that from my heart this morning. I want more of Jesus, the less of the world. I'm more convinced today that people need Jesus. So the heavenly representatives here this morning. All your needs. And where else are you going to go this morning to get all your needs met? But to Jesus. So if you'd like to come for prayer, we'd like to pray for you this morning. Pray for you, sister. Thank you. Jesus, be my Lord.
I believe the Lord has witnessed to many hearts in this sanctuary today of His desire for their salvation. And today we say to you, for those who are yet outside of the fold, God loves you. He desires for you to be in the fold, in the fest, and ready, amen, when He comes and receives His bride unto Himself. Today, we also want you to know this church loves you. We're not a perfect bunch of people, but we are a people who loves God. And we love you. This morning we see God's desire to bring you in. And we pray you do not put up too late for what God has set in order for you to receive through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus.